Auto aim fail. A mistake in World of Tanks by dangerously incompetent. I'm driving the Struv M40L Swedish Tier 3 medium tank in the Arctic region in a Tier 4 battle. Now the mistake I want to talk about happens about uh, when there's about 9 minutes 40 left on the clock. So if you only want to see the mistake you can fast forward. However, the rest of this game is an ace tanker game. How many kills did I get? Da, 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 da. Oh, I didn't write it down. Oh, that's rubbish. Anyway, it's an ace tanker game. I do rather well. Well, you can't exactly be proud of that at, at tier 3, can you? But, but the fact remains, it was an ace tanker game. So, watch and learn if you're new. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. <coughs> The mistake I want to talk about is an auto aim fail, and it's not done by me. It's done by one of my opponents, the Cruiser 2, who hasn't shown himself yet, and it's a while before we see him or you see him shooting me. But I want to—I'll talk about it whilst you watch the battle unfold. Now, auto aim. For those of you who don't know, get your cursor on a tank. Hit the right mouse button by default, and auto aim is engaged. If you want to disengage auto aim, you aim, put your cursor on no tanks and hit the right mouse button again. And once auto aim has been engaged, your gunner will turn the turret, elevate and elevate your gun, or uh, traverse your gun if if that's what's necessary. It won't traverse the tracks. But the gunner will try and point the gun at the center of the tank you have engaged the auto aim on. So you'll turn the turret. It doesn't guarantee that the cursor will always be there because your turret only turns so fast and your, your target might be moving around and so on. But it tries to get, he tries to get the uh, gun pointing at the center of the tank. Now it's all well and good if you're using it in a dogfight. If you're up close and personal and he's zooming around and you're zooming around and your tank's going over rough ground and it's bouncing up and down like anything, there's no way you can look through the snipers for you and aim. And even if you're in a third person view, it's really difficult to get the cursor onto the enemy tank and there's always a chance it'll slip off and then your gun will suddenly point into the air because it thinks you're trying to shoot a target that's you know, a kilometre away. So for that purpose, auto-aim is great. If you're up close and personal and you're in a dogfight, you, you manage to right-click while your cursor is on the enemy tank, then your gunner takes care of moving your turret around and moving your gun up and down and all the rest of it. All you have to do is wait for the gun cursor to be on the enemy tank and then you press the fire button. That's what it's really useful for. What it's not useful for is tanks that are far away and are moving uh, across your field of view really fast. Because those tanks, you have to lead the shot by quite a way. You have to aim in front of them. You have to aim at where they're going to be when the round gets there. And auto-aim won't do that. Auto-aim will point the gun at the middle of the enemy tank. Which means if they're moving across your field of view quite fast, then your shot is going to fall behind them. So it's no good for that. The other thing it's not, no good for is when there's something in the way. Whether you're stationary or moving or whatever, it doesn't matter. If there's something like a rock or a, a rise in the ground between you and the center of the en your, your gun and the center of the enemy tank. Now you notice the Cruiser 2 is now hitting me. That's because I'm not, I'm not moving around much and he's hitting me. If there's something in the way the auto aim doesn't take account of that, it still points the gun at the centre of the tank, even if that means the shot is going to go plough into the ground, or 
plough into a rock. And that's the mistake the Cruiser 2 makes. Now there are shots landing around me. It's not the guy in the water because he can't fire underwater. If you notice, they're mostly falling behind me. And it's coming from where the Cruiser 2 turns out to be. At this point, let us slow it down a bit more to have a good look at it. He's the last guy left, and there he is. Now there's a rise in the ground between me and him, and I can only just see him over that rise, so that means I'm only exposing the, the top half of my turret down to the gun. The centre of my tank is a lot lower, and if you draw a line between his gun and the centre of my tank, it goes through that rise in the hill, rise in the ground. Uh, we'll see shortly. He fires, ploughs straight into the ground. I think he's on auto-aim. Either he's a really rotten shot, or he's on auto-aim. I think he's on auto-aim because of the way his shots were landing behind me when I was moving. When I was stationary, pretty much, they were hitting me and now there's something in the way, he's ploughing his shots into the ground. So that's the mistake he's making. He's using auto-aim when he shouldn't be. He should be aiming manually because all he can see is my turret. And it costs him. <laughs> he does absolutely no damage to me and I rip him to shreds. So, up close, remember, up close and personal, dogfighting, Auto-aim, good. Tanks that are far away, auto-aim, bad. Tanks with something in between you, your gun and the centre of their tank, auto-aim, bad.